Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 151. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 146 to 154. Hey, in this video, we're going to learn about the dated if function. This is a great function that will calculate between two dates, the total number of years, the total number of completed months, or the total number of completed days. Now, this is an undocumented function. It comes from earlier versions of Lotus, and Excel still has it in uh, to, to be compatible with uh, Lotus. Uh, but there's no documentation. I have some notes up here, up at the top of the spreadsheet you can look at, and there's even a reference to a good book and a good website. Now, I have these labels um, uh, for you to read that will help you figure out what each column is, but I'm going to highlight these and unwrap them just so we have a little bit more room. Now, for this column, we're going to calculate the number of completed uh, years between these two dates, a start date and an end date. Here we'll do completed months, here completed days. When we get over here, this will be MD means, hey, all the days past the last completed month. This will mean all the late, the completed, the months since the last completed year. And finally, there's days. So how many uh, days since the last completed year? Now, we'll see how all of these work. Let's start here in this cell and type equals dated. Now, notice, usually in 2007, when you start to type a function, it, it gives you a drop down, but it doesn't. So we'll have to put an open parenthesis there, dated if. Not only that, but there's a screen tip, and it doesn't give us any helpful hints about our arguments. So you got to kind of know that start date comes first, then end date, and then the final argument, which where you put the Y, the M, or the D. So we'll click on our start, comma, end, comma, and I want this Y. Now, we need to, because I want to copy this formula to all these cells, I want to click in the H14 and hit F4 the F4 key three times to put it, the dollar sign in front of the column reference because we need that date as we co copy it over here but when we move down we need to move to the next one. Same with this one and this one we need this Y for the whole column but not when we move over to the column so we'll put the dollar sign in front of the number. Close parentheses and control enter. That keeps the cell highlighted. Now I'm going to double click and send it down, and then I'm going to copy it over. And we'll take a look at what all of this means. Now for this column, we're calculating completed years. And if we click right here, we can see it got the right cell references, and it's looking at that Y. Some people actually uh, put in quotes Y like this. But for this example, I was better to do a cell reference because then we could see. So the, the third argument is either Y, M, D, M, D, Y, M, or Y, D. I'm going to click Escape. We can see that it got it right. Uh, 1, 1, 2007 to 1, 2. Even though there's an extra day, the completed years are 2. See here it says 1, 1, 2007 to 3, 2, 2009. So there's only two completed years, so that's what it returns. Similarly, here, 1, 1, 2007 to 2, 3, 2, 2010, that's three years. Now let's look at completed months. This is months, right? So if we have 1, 1, 2007 to 1, 1, 2008, we have 12. Similarly here, it's the third day in January of the uh, second year, but that's only completed months. So Y, M, D are completed uh, years, months, or, or days. Now let's go down here. 1, 1, 2007 to 3, 2, 2010 is 38. It's three years, which is 36 months, plus the two extra months. Now let's look at days. That one's pretty straightforward. It's just days. We actually could have done a different formula and just subtracted the later date from the earlier date and it would have given us days. Now here's where it gets interesting. We have uh, month and day. That means the com number of days since the last completed month. So here, since we have 1, 1, 2007 to 1, 1, 2008, it's zero days. This one is one extra day. This one is two extra days. Same with down here. We have since it's month, day, it's the number of days since the last completed month. Well, here, the last completed month was 3-1, 2010, so then we get one extra day. Now, let's look at uh, months past the last completed year. You can see here for this end date, 
these are all ones. It's not till it gets to uh, two, two that there's one extra month. And so that's what it says. Same with here on this one. Now if we go back over here, we can see one, one, 2007 to three, two, 3010. There's two extra months. And then finally, then we have uh, days past the last completed year. That's why on January 2nd, it's only one day. January 3rd, it's two days. Now let's look at this one, interestingly enough. This is days past the last completed year. So this is 1-1-2007, um, one, one, and this is 1-2-2009. So there's only one extra day since the last completed year. So that's how those are examples for all of the arguments. And then I've even put, if you download this, it shows you the actual months and days written out as text. All right, that's the dated if. It's just an amazing function sometime, exactly what you need. All right, we'll see you next trick.